Um, but let's say you do have some experience and you're getting started. I think one of the first things I would do is I would find a company that provides the materials that you're using mm -hmm. that will do classes to teach you exactly yep. how to install that specific product. Mm. This is the Contractor Files Podcast. Your hosts, Ethan McNeil and Trent Keith, take a deep dive into the construction and remodeling industry to uncover keys to success and pitfalls to avoid. Welcome to our podcast, episode 21, 22. Sorry, it's 22. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Did you say 21, 22. 21, 22. Yeah, wow. 2,122. Two. Two. <laughs> we, we would be... I don't know if we'll be around when <laughs> I've been that many podcasts. That's quite a while. Oh, uh, we're on such a roll, we don't even know what number we're on. Yeah. But we do think it's 22. Yes. So. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We are going to talk about a very important topic today. Yeah. Uh, top three things I would do if I was starting my construction business right now. There you go. So, um, I... I can already tell that this would be something that a lot of people would like to chime in on. So if you're listening and you're a construction business or you owned one in the past, um, list in, your, in the comments uh, what your top three things would be because that would be interesting to see everybody's opinion there. I'm sure we, uh, we, we could get a lot, of, uh, a lot of different areas covered in those comments. <laughs> so For sure. All right, Trent, you want to start us off? Yeah. Okay, I feel like the first thing I would do right now <laughs> is <laughs> starting um, a construction business, I think I would start with finding people who are also in the construction work. Mm. I think I would find a group of individuals who are either already rolling in the construction business or have just gotten started that you can um, have meetings with, mm -hmm. have sit down conversations, maybe it's just a lunch every week or two, um, and kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, because I idea. feel like when you start something like this, there's so many things you have to figure out yes. and get good at that if you can get mentors or people in the same position who have a little experience that they're, they're glad to help you that's an extremely helpful way to get started. So I yes. think that's where I would start. Yeah, that's good. Um, <clears throat> uh, for me, I think the first thing I would do <laughs> is find work. <laughs> oh, that might be that might be obvious, but um, I think I would I would kind of uh, explore the construction industries and all the different areas and see what it was that people don't like to do and what has normally what people don't like to do has a higher profit margin so i would be looking for those two things something that people don't like to do and something that has a decent uh, or a high profit margin because people don't like to do it and uh for instance that's that there's like all kinds of stuff but crawl spaces, people don't like to get in crawl spaces, people don't like to mess with sewer or, or plumbing issues a lot of times. or um, So things like that, I mean, cleaning, sometimes you can get make a whole business off of professional cleaning or you know construction inspection stuff and because people don't like the paperwork. There's so many areas and maybe you're coming, hopefully you're coming from uh, a place where you have a little bit of experience in some area of construction. <laughs> Um, but that's the first thing I would do is I would try and find a niche um, that I thought I could focus my time, my business on that had a higher profit margin and that people didn't like to do because if people don't like to do it, they're mu it's a lot easier to market your services. People call you asking you, please come do this. I don't want to do it. So that's a much better place to be than trying to convince somebody to you know, that you want to do the easy parts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, like Ethan said, I hope you got some experience in it anyway, or you wouldn't be trying yeah. this, right? Because it would be bad if you start with no experience yes. whatsoever. Um, but let's say you do have some experience and you're getting started. 
I think one of the first things I would do is I would find a company that provides the materials that you're using mm -hmm. that will do classes to teach you exactly yep. how to install that specific product. Mm, that's, um, that's something that we've done a lot with our construct construction crews is mm -hmm. we would go to the manufacturer and they would provide training in those things. Yep. And um, it doesn't matter what it is you like. I mean, as far as construction, there's all different areas of things you can yep. do. But if you find that product that you feel comfortable with and you go get trained in mm -hmm. that specifically, that just puts you way above all your competition because most people yes. never take the time yes. to learn how to properly install yep. a lot of products with yes. construction. Yeah, and the, and the thing I like about that too is it immediately adds credibility to your business if yes. you can slap a logo on your you know on your website that says we're a certified installer of whatever yes. it is, and you might have only been in business for six months, but people immediately say, oh, that person knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They know how to do this particular item. So yep. I like that for sure. That actually goes along. Were you done with that? Sorry. Yep. To, okay. oh, no. That goes along with my number two. Uh, so our, our oh, there you go. It's uh, learn all that you can about a particular thing. So mm -hmm. once you found that area of that you want to focus on as a business, do everything you can. Like Trent was saying, you know, go to the manufacturer and the material um, uh, seminars and, and yep. teachings and stuff. But then also do your own research about everything you can on that particular niche that you are trying to get into. Watch YouTubes, watch um, webinars, you know, go, go talk to other companies that are doing it. And, you know, if you don't have any work coming in, go find another company that does have work and work for them, you know, for a little bit. Ask if you can say, hey, can I do part time work while I'm trying to grow my business? It's got, that might not work out. But um, <clears throat> regardless, do everything you can to become an expert in your particular field. And do stuff for free if you have to. If that's how you have to learn, mm -hmm. do stuff for your friends and family and that particular thing for free, and and you'll start learning that way. So, yep, people will hire experts and in, um, in a particular niche. Yep, you know you laughed about that going to work for someone else who does the same thing, but it is true. I know mm -hmm. when I started construction, there was a couple other people who. Uh, had been doing it a little bit longer and they needed help. Mm -hmm. So the days that I didn't have work, I would go work for them mm -hmm. and help them on their jobs. And then if I was real busy, they could sometimes come help me also. Yeah. And it helped us all grow our businesses. Yeah. And it helped us learn from each other how yes. to improve with everything yeah. we've done. So definitely be in contact with the other people that do the similar things a lot mm -hmm. of times you have people that maybe feel like you're a competitor and they don't want to talk to you or whatever and that's yeah. fine but there's plenty other business owners out there yes. that would be glad to work with you uh -huh. um, have you work for them some and maybe they need to work for you some when they're slow yep. uh, you can all work together to help grow each, each yes. other's businesses for sure yeah, and that also that gives you some cash flow, which is a yes. big deal when you're starting your company. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have bills to pay, and if you can just get, like you said, a couple days a week that you were, you got, you're charging someone else, and you know that's two days a week that I'm at least gonna get paid for. Mm -hmm. um, that is huge when you're starting your business because yes. it is hard to get that cash flow going. Yeah, so, it's another for benefit. Sure. Yep. What you got next? Oh, well, I only got my number three left. You got your number three, and you need to do mine. Go ahead. I'll, okay. I'll do mine after yours. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so my third thing that I would do, and this is obviously after you have found what you want to do and you've learned all you could. I didn't put a number. There should be a step two and a half. But you, um, you get it. Obviously, you need to get enough work that you can get to this point. But hire help. And I would say in this day and age, there's so many um, people who will work part time from their homes and there, there's people who will um, even do like contracting work for you or um, so it's not like you have to hire a full time employee if you can't afford that just yet. But figure out a way to build your business up enough 
that you have that cash flow coming in, that you can start hiring somebody to take some tasks off your plate. And the reason why that would be my number three is because you will never grow your business past your own salary if you don't learn how to hire people to come in and help you. And there's people who run businesses, have been for 30, 20, 30 years, and they still don't know how to hire help, and they still have to do everything themselves. And so that it's hard, but it's a skill that you need to learn how to do. And that's that's the third thing I would do. I would try and figure out how can I start hiring people to help me do what I'm doing, make money, and then that gives me time to focus on marketing and sales and whatever else I need to do and to grow my company. Um, so that's the third thing I would do. Uh, my next one would kind of go along with that, but with a little bit of a spin. So um, <laughs> I would definitely get to the point where I need to hire someone to help, but... I'm not saying that that is going to be the same for every person because one person mm -hmm. may need to hire a laborer to help do physical work. Mm -hmm. Another person may need to hire office personnel mm -hmm. to take care of phone calls, paperwork, estimates. Mm -hmm. So I would say hiring is a big key, but the biggest point to that you need to keep in mind is what is your weakness that you need to hire first? Mm -hmm. So yeah. depending on That's who good. you are, what your weak points are, you have to go off that to know who to hire first, what position you yes. need the most. Because maybe you're just best at hands-on work. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, you don't need to hire another hands-on worker. Yes. You need to hire someone to organize your business and yep. take care of, like you're saying, yes. the advertising or the uh -huh. uh, financing or whatever be the case, scheduling. Yep. Now, there's a lot of different things that need to be done to run a business well. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out what your weakest point is and what position that needs yes. to be to start with. Yep, sure. that's good. Yeah. Okay, so that's three for each yeah. of us. Yep. I think um, I think for a lot of people it can be scary hiring somebody. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I think if your goal is just to be a one man show and uh, not have to deal with a big business and headache, then you know why hire people? Get as busy as you want, and but you're never going to grow. You're never going to become. Uh, you're just basically working for other people. You've replaced having a boss for having customers that are your boss now. <laughs> um, but you're never going to make more than your salary cap. And that's hiring is just one of those things. I think we did a whole podcast on that, didn't mm -hmm. we? We did. Yeah. Yes. It's just one of those pain points that you got to got to do. Yep. But it gets easier, right? Once you hire one employee, it's a smooth sailing from there. <laughs> you never have troubles after that. Yeah. <laughs> They're just perfect. Uh, but one thing you do not have to worry about hiring mm -hmm. is uh, estimating software yes. that's really expensive, right? Yeah. So not only can you get by with hiring somebody to do your estimates, but you can buy our estimating software yep. app to do that for you and make yes. it simple, right? Yes. You want to tell them about that, Ethan? Yeah, so we have an estimating app, and if you've been watching our podcast, you know this, but we have an estimating app that is uh, just $25 a month, I think, right now for a team of two people, and um, it, that those prices could change, so you know, get on the boat while it's still cheap. <laughs> but um, uh, basically, any kitchen or bathroom remodels, and it also has the ability to do custom estimates, so it can handle things outside of... Um, bathrooms and kitchens, but you can do those estimates for a remodel of a kitchen or a bathroom in minutes, like literally in minutes. And you can change the variations, you know, if you didn't, you know, well, what is it if we don't paint? What is it if we don't do this or this? And you could do all of that with a client in their house, give them the prices, and if they're good with it, you could have them sign off on your estimates um, right there. And if you are just starting your business, you know how much um, mental headache and um, time mm -hmm. it takes you to meet with somebody and then go home or go to your office 
and figure out the estimate, get the materials, put the quote together, use a Word document to figure out how to format it all. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. And you can you can literally get your chores done <laughs> while you're at the customer's house mm -hmm. and they can even you can even set it up with like Stripe to get a down payment from them while you're there. You know, if you're somebody who requires like a 10% down or something, you can get that right there. You can send them a link with on their phone they can give you a down payment. So it's really a great tool. It is. And it's completely free to try it out. Sound like an yeah. infomercial right now. But you can go to myestimatingapp.com and you can try the app out for free, I think for seven days. Uh, that gives you plenty of time to run estimates and see if it's actually something you could do. So go do that. It literally would have saved us hours when oh, yeah. we first started doing our estimating mm -hmm. um, because it took so long yes. for all that process. If we would have had this, it would have made a major difference. And, and think about how many more jobs would have gotten accepted oh, yeah. if you... If you have two contractors and one of them says, hey, it'll be a week, maybe, <laughs> we'll, we'll get you your, your estimate. Uh -huh. And somebody else who says, well, I can get you three estimates before we even leave. I can you know, run the numbers right now and I guarantee you that person's going to come away with the job. Mm -hmm. So, Yep, that's for sure. So <laughs> check it out. Yes. I guarantee you, you'll appreciate it. Yes. Oh. And you can use the promo code PODCAST if you want a, a good again. discount for the first few months. So there keep that go. in mind. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Trent Keith. Yep, I'm Ethan. You have a good rest of your week. Thank you for tuning in to our podcast. Be sure to share this podcast with your friends and family. To ask us any questions that might get answered in our next podcast, please visit our website, thecontractorfiles.com. Have a great rest of your day.